Hello and welcome. I'm David Jones. I am the Sergeant of Arms and welcome to Queen City Toastmasters. We always like to give a fun fact whenever we start our meetings. And fun fact, today in history, 1984, Mary Lou Retton was at the Los, An Los Angeles Olympics and she became the first American woman to win an individual Olympic gold medal in gymnastics. I didn't realize that. True fact, 1984, I was like, 18, I actually wrote her a love letter and sent it to the Olympic Committee, and I never heard from her, but that's, that's a true story. Also, 19, yeah, she might have got it, and then she decided not to read it or <laughs> call me back. Anyways, 1934, today, Hitler became the dictator of Germany. He was Chancellor Adolf Hitler, and then he became the dictator with the title, the Fuhrer. And he promised all the German people that the Third Reich would last for a thousand years. It only lasted for 11 years, so that didn't work out for him. So always be careful of politicians that make a lot of promises. That's my, my statement. Now, Elvis is driving. He is the president of our club, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to our vice president of education, Dr. Eric. And he's our presiding officer, and he can run it until Elvis gets here. So, welcome, Eric. Thank you, Toastmaster David. One of the traditions we use when we start our meetings is we give guests an opportunity to introduce themselves and just share with us how they heard about Toastmasters and if there's anything else they want us to know about them. If you are a guest and you are present, please raise your hand. Okay, we're gonna start right over here. Would you like to share your name with us and just how you heard about Toastmasters? And you can sit down or stand up or do whatever you like. Um, I'm Kylie. I've been here like three times maybe, but it's been a while, but I'm here to support my mom because she's giving her first speech. So, yeah. Excellent. Thank you, Kylie. My name is Rachel, and I actually used to come to Toastmasters here like maybe seven or eight years ago, and I was the VP of Education, and today I'm here because my best friend Heather is giving her first speech, and I'm super excited here to support her and David. David is a rock star, if you guys don't know it. He just got his first copy of his book he just wrote, so I'm actually excited to be here and supporting him as well. Thank you, Rachel. And we have one more guest here with us. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is DeAndre Thompson. I heard about Toastmasters from a podcast I was listening to. This is actually my first time here. And I decided to come because I want to be a better public speaker. So. Excellent. Welcome. Thank you. And we have, if you are a guest online, could you also raise your hand for me, please? Excellent. Please uh, share with us your name and how you heard about Toastmasters. Hi, everybody. My name is Irina. I heard, uh, I mean, I know about Toastmasters for many, many years. I heard about you in particular through the meetup groups. And uh, I'm an introvert and I'm tired of that. So I want to <laughs> make some progress <laughs> to learn to speak better in public. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And I see we have another guest online. And if you could please introduce yourself and also let us know how you heard about Toastmasters. Sure, I'm Melissa Hutchinson. Uh, this is my second time as a guest uh, for this Toastmasters. I was hoping to be there in person today, but I'm unfortunately a little under the weather, so joining online, but hope to uh, be there in person next week. 
Great. Thank you. Welcome. Any other guests online? Hello. Hi, this is CJ. This is my second time attending. Also, I am a member of the Find Your Voice Toastmaster Club on Clubhouse. And I heard about the Queen City Toastmaster Club by way of Andrea Chocolate Butterfly. <laughs> And I, was, I reside here in Charlotte. So um, again, this is my second time attending. My schedule is kind of full. So I try to log in when I can. So thank you for having me tonight. Welcome and thank you. And I think we see one other guest. Uh, Leon, would you like to introduce yourself as well? Yeah, sure. Uh, my name is Leon. I believe this is my uh, third time or fourth time. Uh, meeting. This is the first time virtual as I was uh, driving back home, uh, got in kind of late to make it over there. So this is my first time participating from the virtual uh, standpoint. And uh, and I'm joining Toastmasters to, of course, to perfect uh, my public speaking and also uh, to meet other like-minded individuals. Great. Well, welcome to all of our guests, and thank you very much for those kind introductions. I would now like to introduce Toastmaster Fitz, who will be our Toastmaster of the day this evening. Please join me in welcoming Fitz. Greetings, fellow Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and honorable guests. Thank you all for joining us. My name is Fitz Slight, and I'll be your host for this evening. We recently crossed over into a new month named August, which happens to be the eighth month of the year. Now, as, as I was preparing for today's meeting, I learned that the number eight actually has a lot of biblical and philosophical meanings. So what does the number eight mean? Thank you for asking, David. I saw you were thinking about it. Eight is a number of new beginnings. It's linked to a brighter future, new horizons, and a new life in general. It also represents the sign of victory and a sign of a perfect sacrifice. So today our meeting topic is new beginnings. And throughout this meeting, I'm gonna share with you eight new beginnings that are personal to me, briefly of course. Number one being a new job. Coming out of high school, I knew for a fact I wanted to do investment banking. I saw the movie Wall Street, I was gung-ho about it. I finally got into the role and I completely hated it. But I persevered for a couple of years. You know, we always get comfortable and uncomfortable situations. And eventually I decided enough was enough. And I don't know whether it was just me being afraid to go out and see what's next or just uh, me being lazy and not wanting to put in the effort to go out and find a new job, but eventually I did. And I came across my current role in venture capital and I completely love it. My second new beginning this year was a new location. So I've stayed in five different states in the last five years. Um, I'm originally from Florida. I went to grad school in Nashville, trained in New York for a couple months, came down to Charlotte, and I was in Dallas last year. I hate moving as much as the next guy, but what it does give you is a chance to reinvent yourself. So while that change might be scary and a new beginning is something that we all don't really look forward to, I see it as a perfect opportunity. So now I'm gonna introduce Junior to come up and give us our inspirational speech for, inspirational speech for this meeting. Thank you, Fitzgerald. Today, I wanted to share with you guys something that's been happening to me for the past several years. I didn't understand it until recently. I was so confused by it. There was days that I would wake up on the wrong side of the bed when the day before I felt just fine. And these feelings will last for weeks, maybe two, three weeks. And it was difficult for me because I thought something was wrong with me. I thought I needed help. Something was foggy in my mind and I didn't understand it. I started asking myself, what is it that I'm manifesting? Or what is it that I'm asking for? I pray to God every night. And of course I go through my things and I ask him for certain things, whether that may be patience, courage. And then I realized, the things that we ask for come with a price. That price is change. 
change is very uncomfortable for all of us, especially if we are in our routines. We like what we do every day in and out, but we have to accept it. And with that change comes different things in our lives, whether that may be new friends, new job, a new perspective. And it's tough to maneuver through those things, but just understand that you're transforming in that time. You're developing new thoughts. You're developing a new person. So essentially, you're leveling up. You're moving up to the next level in your life. You just got past the boss and now you're pushing up and that's what you keep doing. So then I realized that these moments were gonna constantly come because of the things that I'm asking for and they're gonna keep coming with that price. So if you were just like me, if you feel the same way where you feel down and you don't know what's going on, ask yourself, what is it that's happening in my life and what's changing? And you may be leveling up, thanks. Thank you, Toastmaster Junior, for that. Now I'm going to introduce our grammarian for the evening, Sean. Thank you, Toastmaster Fitzgerald. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters, honorable guests, both in person and on Zoom tonight. As your grammarian for the evening, I will be providing you with the word of the day so you can use it throughout your speeches and then also be watching for improper and proper use of grammar. So I'll be watching for words such as, uh, you know, so, um, and so forth. So the word of the day, which I hope you use, is the word suffice. I'll say it again, it is suffice. It is a verb and it is to meet or satisfy a need, to be enough, to be equal, to the wants or demands of something. I'll give you two examples. Her example alone should suffice to show that anything is possible. No, you do not need to write her an email. A phone call will suffice. The fact that you are here at Toastmasters this evening suffices your need or your desire to improve your speech. The word of the evening, suffice. Toastmaster Fitzgerald, back to you. Thank you, Toastmaster Sean. Now we're gonna have our timer for the evening. Alan, Toastmaster Alan. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and guests. My job as timer is to keep time. And then I have that really cool little apparatus right over there that will help me help you keep track of time. Heather's speech is four to six minutes as it's an icebreaker. And Eric is giving a five to seven minute speech. So once they have hit four and five minutes respectively, the light will turn green. After five and six minutes, it'll turn yellow. And then after six and seven, it'll turn red and it'll stay on until they're finished. Table topics are one to two minutes and the green light will come on at one minute. Yellow, it'll be one and a half, and then red, it'll be two. And then for our evaluation speeches, those are two to three minutes. So the green light will come on at two minutes. It'll come on yellow at two and a half, and then red at three minutes. And in order to qualify to win an award in each category, there is a 30 second grace period at the beginning and end of those minimum and maximum times. And then I will give a timer's report at the end of each speaking segment. Thank you. Thank you, Toastmaster Allen. And before we get to our speeches, I just wanna give you all points three and four of my new beginnings. So last month, or actually June now, we're in August, I started a exclusive social club for Charlotte focused on philanthropy, philanthropy networking, as well as just having a great time with like-minded people all willing to level up as Junior mentioned. and. What I learned is that uh, only having one person in a social club will not suffice. I need to go out, make new friends, and that was also another thing that I did that was new. I started doing new experiences, joined Toastmasters, as well as just going out to different 
networking events to find a board. And what I was able to truly learn in that experience is that when you build an all-star team, you're able to accomplish way more together than what you can truly do individually. So now I'm gonna go ahead and transition to our next segment of the meeting. And we're gonna have our speeches done first by Heather, Toastmaster Heather. Thank you, Fitz. So do I stand here? I felt weird. Hello, fellow Toastmasters. I wanna stand here. <laughs> okay, so I decided tonight to do a speech on, first I'm gonna present a question. When was the last time you took a risk? And for me, a risk is doing something where I'm entering unchartered territory where I have a desire or an emotion that's leading me towards wanting to do something that I have zero experience doing. And so I want to talk about some risks that I have decided to take and how they have propelled me forward to success and how I continue to challenge myself. So one thing I wanted to talk about was when we are capable of putting ourselves out there to do risks, most of the time I think it comes down to confidence. And confidence for me is a muscle that has been developed over time. It's not something that came naturally to me. And a lot of times, some of us are set up more successfully because of childhood and maybe perhaps we were put in situations where we were able to build that confidence. And so whether or not we have those situations as children, most of us don't. I think it's like 80% of us are coming from dysfunctional households, which is a really sad statistic, but it's a, it, it, is, it is an unfortunate truth. And so for me, confidence came from building a muscle as an adult. So my childhood looked, and I don't really like talking about my childhood because I have a huge apathy for vic victim mentality, but I am going to give you a little bit of an introduction into my childhood, a very small introduction to where we can understand how hard it was for me to build that confidence muscle over time. So I come from, my mother is a, is a struggling drug addict and alcoholic to this day. And we lived in homeless shelters. And I think I was in 15 different schools uh, before I got to high school. And so I never was, I never had a foundational support system where I had confidence in myself and my ability to step through and to be able to do things. And so what I would do was I, I ended up quitting high school. So I never graduated from high school. So I got my GED. I did go and get my GED. And then I decided to go to college. But I, what I had was a pattern of never following through with what I signed up to do. So I would go to college and I would pick something and I would do it and then I would quit. And then I got into nursing school and then I it, it was too hard. I was struggling academically. So I decided that wasn't for me. And then what happened was I ended up pregnant. And I think I was 26 with my first child. And my husband and I decided that I was going to stay home with my children, with our children. And I was going to, and I gave everything to my children. So I have two children now, they're 18 and 19. So they are practically young adults. And I gave everything to them. And the, the good thing about being a parent is you never have the opportunity to quit. You can't quit on your children. And so what I did is I changed the dysfunctional patterns of my family and where I came from. 
and flipped the switch in the narrative for my children. So I did face a fear because I left my old life behind. My children have been completely isolated from my lifestyle. And for them to really understand, they would have to watch a movie. And so that is a proud moment for me to know that I brought my kids outside of that dysfunction. And I had great success with that. I never felt comfortable leaving my kids with anybody. So I stayed with them and I nurtured them. And I have two very successful children. My daughter loves animals. She's here with me on her time off as an 18 year old. And so I think that in and of itself speaks volumes. And she's an, a huge animal lover, a horse trainer. Her, she's got a huge heart. She's a hard worker. And she is a homeschooled high school student who is also taking college credits at the local community college. And my son is in Virginia Tech University and as an inspiring doctor. And so I just feel really proud about that. So that is one of the things that started to build my confidence in myself, but I also work really hard. I spend hours daily on meditation. I work out. I read a lot of self-help books. I constantly put myself out there. And with that being said, I, and now that my children don't need me and that purpose was taken away, um, rightfully so and proudfully so. I, I started my own business. So I started a, biz, a hemp drive CBD business back in 2020. So it's a very new business, but a very successful business. And we are thriving and we are growing and we are scaling. And I have no idea what I was doing in the business world, but I decided that I wanted to do it. And I'm a firm believer that, that when there is a will, there is a way and that we can accomplish really hard things. And so now I'm the, um, I'm the CEO of a thriving company. We are uh, breaking through retail stores. We are an earth fair and uh, we are growing and scaling and I'm wildly proud of my success. But why I share this story is not to toot my own horn. It's, it's to share with people that it doesn't matter where we come from, that we can do amazing things if we believe we can. When there's a will, there's a way. And if we decide to have faith over fear, we can do amazing things. So I hope that inspires you to choose faith over fear because as a high school dropout, without even a business plan, I am running a very successful business. And so, thank you. No worries, thank you Toastmaster Heather. Can we get another round of applause for Heather? This is. So when you first join Toastmasters, the very, the very first speech that you do is an icebreaker speech. And when you're just starting out public speaking, it's very nerve wracking and it takes courage to be able to do that. So you did an amazing job, Heather. And next we will have Eric Lassner competing, completing presentation mastery course with a speech titled Lessons Learned from Hockey. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and guests, and thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. Is there something that you remember that you absolutely loved to do when you were a kid? Well, when I was growing up, I absolutely loved to play sports. And my favorite sport to play was hockey. It's no surprise because I grew up in Montreal and Quebec, where they say the largest religion in the province was hockey. I learned to ice skate when I was two. I started playing organized hockey when I was six, and I loved it so much that after school and on weekends, I would go to our outdoor rink, and despite the frigid temperatures in Montreal, I would stay and play hockey for hours. In fact, I would only go home when my fingers and toes were so painful from frostbite that they brought tears to my eyes, and I'd show up at my house crying, and my mother would have to come for me. But the next day, I would do exactly the same thing. 
when I was six, I started to compete on more competitive teams. And one of the teams that I played on when I was 10 years old was doing very well. We won our first three hockey games. And then we had our fourth game, which we were told was against the hockey team that won the provincial championships the year before, which basically means that they were the best team in our province in our age group. That's like being the best football team in the entire state of Texas. So the game started and our team scored a goal before the first minute even passed. And we were very impressed with ourselves. We started celebrating and one of my teammates said, hey, maybe we're gonna be the provincial champions this year. But I think the only reason we scored that goal was because the team we were playing against was either asleep or under general anesthesia for the first minute because we ended up having no other shots on goal the entire game. And all I remember was the rink turning into a NASCAR Zoom set and players from the other team just zooming by us with wave after wave, scoring goal after goal. And we ended up losing that game 15 to one. Now, the reason it was easy to be a hockey fan growing up in Montreal was because when I was younger, the Canadians were very successful. They won more Stanley Cups or more championships than any other team in the NHL. They were like the New York Yankees or the Boston Celtics. <clears throat> and from the time I was born to the time I turned 14, they won 10 Stanley Cups. In fact, they won four when I was uh, in my young teens. And so it was a lot of fun being a Montreal Canadiens fan. Now, part of what added to the fun for me and my friends was that the Canadians had a lot of French speaking players on their team. And they had some really cool names that we used to love to pronounce like Jacques Lemaire or Guy Lapointe or Gilles Lupien. And they also had some really cool nicknames. The nicknames were in French, but they would often get translated into English. For example, Maurice the Rocket Richard. He was called the Rocket because he skated so fast or Yvon the Roadrunner, Cornoyer. He was called the Roadrunner because he was small, but he was really speedy. And if he got the puck, you were not gonna catch him. But my favorite nickname was a guy by the name of Bernie Geoffrion, whose nickname was Boom Boom. And he was called Boom Boom because he had such a great slap shot. Now, fortunately for me, one of the most interesting aspects of my hockey story was that before I was born, my grandfather started a business that sold sporting goods. And at some point, they became the supplier of equipment for the Montreal Canadiens. And so it was not unusual for me to be in my grandfather or father's office on a Saturday morning, and one or two of the players would come by because they'd be looking at a new set of hockey sticks or a new pair of skates. And that was really thrilling for me as a kid. But even more exciting than that, we would occasionally get tickets and go to a hockey game. And after the hockey game, we would sometimes get invited down into the dressing room. And I remember on one occasion when I was nine years old, walking into the dressing room after the game with my dad, which was packed with people, seeing these larger than life players who were tired, who were sweaty. They had scars on their face and stitches. They were missing teeth, but they were all having fun. They were laughing and telling each other jokes and talking to reporters, and they were shuttling back and forth between the showers, most of them wearing towels around their waist. And there was one player that I really liked as a kid. His name was Jacques Leperrier. And my memory of that evening was seeing him come strolling out of the shower, buck naked, no towel, weaving through all the people in the dressing room and just going up to his locker and getting dressed. I will never forget that. Now, these are great memories, but what was probably the most memorable for me playing hockey was that hockey, like most other sports, really provide magical opportunities for people to connect with each other and come together. And one of the teams I played for when I was in my early teens had players join the team from five different districts in Montreal. And what was really interesting was all of these districts were different. For example, one of the districts had kids from very wealthy families who lived in large homes, 
whose parents had white collar jobs and drove really nice cars. Kids from another district on the same team came from very poor communities. They lived in one or two bedroom apartments. Their parents had blue collar jobs and they usually took public transportation. And then there were kids on our team who came from homes where they only spoke English and other kids who came from homes where they only spoke French. And we had kids who were Polish, Italian, Irish, Jewish, Latino, Protestant, Catholic, Asian, white, black. We had kids from everywhere. But none of us as kids ever really saw that. Because in each other, all we really saw were other hockey players. All we really saw were other teammates. All we really saw were new friends. It was really the love of hockey that brought us all together. And I learned and we learned some valuable lessons at that point in our life, including that on the outside, we might be different, but on the inside, we're really, really very similar. And that was the best life lesson I learned while playing hockey. And for that, I am truly grateful. Thank you. Thank you, Toastmaster Eric. Toastmaster Allen, can we have a timer support? All right, Heather, Eric, great job to both of you. Heather, you came in at six minutes and 58 seconds. Eric, you came in literally right at seven minutes and 30 seconds. I was watching carefully. <laughs> Just made the cut. Good job. All right, and now we're going to transition to our table topic section by Toastmaster Dave, Toastmaster John. I'm sorry about that. Thank you, Toastmaster Fitz. My name is John Capello. I indeed will be serving as your table topics master tonight. Before I get into that, I, I just wanna share one of my new beginnings, which may sound cliche, but we are at Toastmasters. And one of my most memorable new beginnings was walking through that door of the vine four years ago. Now, for many, far too many years prior to that, public speaking, I would avoid like the plague. Something about getting in front of a bunch of people that my brain would just turn to mush. I would just blank anytime, I, and I would think up as many excuses as I could not to do it. And I think maybe I just either ran out of excuses or perhaps just got tired of being so scared about it. And I made a conscious decision to walk through those doors four years ago, and I haven't looked back. Not to say that I don't still have nervous energy, I still make mistakes, and I have a long way to go, but my perspective about public speaking has changed. So thank you, Toastmasters. Well, let's get into table topics. This is the impromptu portion of tonight's meeting. And I will call upon volunteers, both members as well as guests, to participate in part, the practice in the art of impromptu speaking. Now, the beauty of impromptu speaking is you don't have to prepare. The problem is you're not prepared. <laughs> So it can be daunting in that regard because you are in fact speaking off the cuff. So I will ask you a question. You'll have one to two minutes to respond. One minute will suffice because that is what will turn on the green light, the magic green light as we call it. Now you can answer it however you'd like. You can answer with whatever comes to mind. You can bring up a story about yourself or maybe someone else or really take it in whatever direction you would like. Think of the stage as a blank canvas. You can paint it however you wish. Now, I wanna remind everyone, this is practice. This is a no judgment zone right here. You may forget your words. You may stumble upon your words. You may not make it until that green light comes on. 
but I want you to try something tonight. Just, just indulge me for a second. Even if you don't have enough to say before that green light comes on, try just standing up here and embrace awkward silence. If you do, something amazing is going to happen, I promise you. After that green light goes on and you go back and sit down, you know what amazing is going to happen? Nothing. <laughs> no one will laugh at you. No one will ridicule you. And you will not be dead. It is a proven fact that public speaking is feared more than death itself. We have to untrain your subconscious mind that public speaking is not a life-threatening exercise. Now, with that an inspiring lead-in, who would like to come to, to do what they came here to do and be the first to volunteer? Here we go. Junior, right? Yeah. Okay, Junior. Got a relatively easy one for you. Can you please give us an example of a new beginning for you and why it was so awesome? One to two minutes. Thank you, Toastmaster John. A new beginning for me, as many of you guys know, was when I became a full-time artist was one of the scariest things I have ever done in my entire life. To be quite frank, I left a $70,000 job to the unknown. Everyone in my family called me crazy. All of my friends, are you sure you wanna do this? I, had no, I didn't know what, would, what, what was gonna happen. I didn't know how to sell my art. I didn't know how to market myself. I didn't know how to reach to clients. But I had my heart and I had belief. I knew it. I knew that this was it. I knew that I had to follow my passion. I knew that I had to follow my gut. I knew that I had to follow my instincts. And when I took this journey, when I took the steps, it was hard. It was difficult. But with work, with patience, with effort, with love, with care, everything started coming into fruition. Little by little, I started gaining confidence. After every project, people started reaching out to me. I started doing all these incredible things. Four months into it, I got a $10,000 project from the city of Charlotte. Five months later, I got a billboard in Los Angeles. All these incredible things started manifesting because of the work, because of the effort that I started putting in. Everything started falling into place because I started, because I followed my heart. Thank you. Great job, Junior. See how easy that was? <laughs> Who would like to be the next lucky volunteer before you get voluntold? <laughs> Anyone online? Hi, this is CJ. I would love to take a chance, but I'm in a position where I'm not able to come on camera. Am I able to take a stab at it without being on video? It's okay with me, it's okay with everyone else. I, I'm, I'm good with that. CJ, you said, right? Yes, that's correct. Okay, CJ. Your question is, it has so been- the Same question? <laughs> no. no. Okay. I, I could have been that, but we're going to try something different here. Sure. I have been known to say that the biggest risk in life is regret. Mm. Can you tell me a situation where perhaps you passed taking an opportunity of a new beginning and what did you learn from it? A, a regretful moment where you did not seize a potential new beginning and what did you learn? by not taking that risk. CJ, one to two minutes. All right, sure, okay. Hmm. As I think about a moment when I regret not taking advantage of a particular moment, I think about an opportunity that I was offered for a great position, but in a city that would put me in a position to drive further. I thought about the advantages of it. I thought about the way it would challenge me and my skill sets. 
I thought about the way it would put me in a position to grow and put me on the path of a trajectory of reaching other goals. And then I also thought about my current situation of my economical status. Am I in a position to one, commute that far daily in order to reach the goals that this position would present? I thought long and hard, as bad as I wanted to take that position, I could not see myself daily in that commute. Today, when I look back where I am now, I do regret because sometimes you do have to take a risk. You have to take a short-term risk in order to reach your long-term goal. A valuable lesson that I learned was to look further out and not look at the right now. Thank you, because I do realize I suffice. Thank you, CJ. And I particularly liked how you snuck in that word of the day right there at the end. That was good. Okay. Maybe another one of our guests. What do we think? Okay, Rachel. Excellent. Welcome her. All right. Okay, Rachel, here's your question. It has been once said, a very famous quote, that a journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step. What does that quote mean to you and or how do you take that first step or help motivate yourself to take the first step? Rachel, one or two minutes. It would suffice to say that if you do not face your fears and go after what you know in your heart and your soul you're called to go after, that you will remain the same. And we did not come to this earth to stay the same. We came to this earth to evolve. We came to this earth to experience life to its absolute fullest. We came here to experience everything that we feel like this. You guys, anybody feel this little like in your gut? David, when you wrote your book, felt something in your gut. And it would have been really easy to say, no, not interested in doing that. Tonight, Heather got up and gave her speech. And we had this conversation because she was like, eh. I'm not really ready. And I'm like, you just got to do it because if you don't get up here, the longer you sit in that chair, the more opportunities that pass you up and the faster you're moving. And the more you take those first steps, the more opportunities that come along your path. And the more we take opportunities, the more opportunities that show up, the more we have to, like um, the gentleman was saying back here earlier, like you got to get uncomfortable. You got to face your fears. And when you do that, you up level to the next level and there's no limits on where we can go except for the limits that we place on ourselves. So that journey of a thousand steps starts with the first step of facing your fear and saying, I'll go first. And then you inspire everybody else in the audience to also get up and take that first step too. Thank you. Awesome job, Rachel. I'm noticing a trend here. No one has took me up on this green light challenge. <laughs> good, good work, everyone. Do we have time for one more perhaps or one more? Okay. Who would like to be the final volunteer tonight? This is your opportunity. This is why I came. Anyone? Leon? Did I see, did someone say Leon was volunteering? Or did I just volunteer? Or did I just volunteer you? <laughs> Sure, I'll go for it. <laughs> All right, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, Leon, your question is, an important part about embracing new beginnings is leaving the past behind. Some people have problems with that. What advice would you give either to yourself or maybe a friend about being able to move on from old habits or to really just leave the past behind and embrace new opportunities. Leon, one to two minutes, sir. Yeah, thanks for the question. So the advice that I would give to either myself or to a friend to embrace new beginnings is understanding 
that at times you have to sacrifice who you are to become who you want to be. And a lot of that has to come down to finding a level of acceptance from your past. See, the true essence of peace of mind is acceptance, understanding what is, what has been, what will be, and what will never be. And a lot of that stems from looking back at your past. And so to many of my friends and to people who are listening to me today, one thing that I would say is allow your dreams, your vision for yourself, that part of you that wants more to have a more fulfilled life, to take that step and allow that energy to pull you out of bed, allow it to inspire you. Because as I said before, in a previous in a previous uh, in a previous speech when I was here at, as a table topic, and the answer beyond that was very, I believe, one that would suffice in terms of understanding that the present moment is the best moment and understanding that once you bring your head out of the clouds of worrying about the future or worrying about the past, one thing that you'll see and notice is that once you come back to reality that you have all the power to change it. Thank you. Awesome job, Leon. I want to congratulate everyone who has participated. Nobody, nobody had to utilize my green, uh, green light exercise. So very well done, very well articulated. I think we had, we had Junior CJ, we had Rachel, and we had Leon. I think that's everyone. Can we please have a timers report, sir? All right, everyone came right within their allotted times for table topics. Junior's speech was one minute, 46 seconds. CJ spoke for one minute, 37 seconds. Rachel spoke for one minute, 33 seconds. Leon spoke for one minute, 32 seconds. And no shade, but John's speech about intro to table topics was seven minutes and 42 seconds. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Timer. Pa apparently, I've been known to be a little uh, elaborative in my uh, in my speeches. So, well, thank you all for your time. Without further ado, as I get kicked off, let me please welcome back to the stage our Toastmaster of the day, Fitz Light. Thank you, Toastmaster John. I, I feel inspired. It's always an honor watching you speak. Now we're gonna to transition to our evaluation segment of Toastmasters. And we're gonna call up our general evaluator, our general evaluator, while well, I can't speak today, Toastmaster Andrea the Chocolate Butterfly. Welcome back, Andrea. Okay, um, I am your general evaluator and my job is to introduce our evaluators today. This is the most important part of Toastmasters because you get feedback on what you did great. We're here to encourage, so you will speak again and you will improve. So my first person that is going to help us out with this part of our wonderful meeting, this has been a great meeting actually, um, but our wonderful meeting today is David. He's gonna be evaluating Heather for her icebreaker. Thank you, Andrea. Before I start with Heather, I just wanna mention that I knew Eric was smart, but it was genius of him as a hockey player to marry a dentist. I think, wow, that was thinking way ahead of the game. <laughs> now, Heather, when you started, you had fun with the camera. I don't know if you were trying to have fun with it or you were just being serious, but it's always to have fun when you're trying to find your place. Cause that made us all laugh and got us engaged and we had a good time. And then you engage the audience with a question. We all had to listen to your question and I'll get to that in a minute, but you did do it. And then you had some great hand gestures. You were standing here talking and you're having a good time. And at one moment you did lose your thought, but you didn't panic. You just stood here and usually that's when we do filler words or we'll do um or something like that but you just stood here and you regained your your thought pattern and you continued so that was really great 
the best part or the best type of stories are the personal ones where you share personal information, which you did, and nobody will ever forget those type of speeches. And you were nervous when you were talking about yourself, but I noticed that when you started talking about your kids and your business, you really turned it up a notch. You were on fire. You were really happy and confident speaker, but it was just the personal stuff that we could tell you were a little nervous and uncomfortable about, but overall it sufficed. I didn't want to throw in suffice, but I had to throw it in there. <laughs> now, room for improvement. Back to your question. You asked us a question, but you didn't give us a chance to answer, and you didn't really I, – I, I don't know where it went. I think you asked a question, but it, it kind of got lost on what your question was, so just needed to, to follow up on it. And my only challenge to you is just to keep on keeping on. Just every week come – you're a very confident speaker. I, I think it's more in your mind than especially when you're giving a speech, because whenever you're doing a role or um, a table topics, you're very confident and you're having fun up here. But just keep on keeping on. And that's it. Back to you, Madam General Evaluator. I was waiting for the green light, too. I was just uh, throwing out That's words. <laughs> well, you made it. He, he, his, his evaluation was sufficient. OK. And so our next person, one of my favorites, is one of my favorites. He knows that. Uh, um, Elvis is going to evaluate another friend, Eric. So Toastmaster Elvis, it is on you. Thank you, Madam General Evaluator, and good evening, fellow Toastmasters and honored guests. I have the pleasure tonight to evaluate Eric's speech. To make his speech memorable, do it with a storyteller style. And our speaker tonight, specifically Eric, did it with a storytelling style, which caught us from the very first moment until the very end. I remember, I picture, I followed every one of your experiences since you were a young child, your trips, your, the bosses you went into, all the situations, the different kids, the different backgrounds, the different origins, how everything played out. You made us understand the emotions, the feelings, the, the passion that you as a little kid had and the love for this sport. Since your project is based on and is focused on body language, I would like to go a little bit further into your body language. I think also your expression, specifically, mostly your hand gestures were very appropriate. Your movement through the stage also helped us follow and you were doing transitions very purposely with a little stop and then moved to the next position, which allowed us to sink in what you were telling us and also follow you through this story. I would like to say that probably one of the points of improvement will be showing a little bit more of your emotions. Like when you were saying the story about walking into the locker room, well, that was a very weird situation probably in that, in that moment, you could have used some expressions or things that would allow us to understand how you felt in that moment. What was the reaction? What, what, what was it like seeing a man butt naked coming in front of you? Wow, that was an amazing experience. Something that I was fascinated or uh, totally surprised by seeing that. So showing a little bit more of your emotion will help strengthen your message. And I would say probably also one of my suggestions will be to sometimes use the 
low tone. But also when I was going into this part, then you can use a higher pitch. That also will help in the delivery of your speech. I think overall, very, very interesting story. Your delivery was awesome. Your body language was very impressive. All in all, a great speech, and I look forward to your next one. Thank you, Toastmaster Elvis. So we're gonna move forward. I'm gonna call up Adam for our timers report for our two evaluators before I move forward. All right, our two evaluators, David came in at two minutes and three seconds, Elvis, just a tiny bit over at three minutes and 36 seconds. So nice job, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I want to say something, um, Adam, you know, he's a character anyway, right? <laughs> but he, he did, he put a spin on things today, right? He, he, he did a timers report for the topics master. So that was kind of fun for me. I just, just wanted to say that. One thing about the, the meeting today to, um, and this is something I harp on and I fell short last week because I had COVID brain. So, <laughs> um, I signed up for a role, but then I didn't show up, but uh, we have to sign up. Only way our meetings are gonna be great or greater or best, best or better is that if we participate. So I encourage everyone to do like I do. I think I do like three, four weeks ahead. So I have to go every, every like Saturday, Sunday, I have to go look and see what did I sign up for? Um, other than a speech, I remember when I do my speeches because uh, I have to prepare those, but any roles I have to go and look, what did I sign up for? And if you, if you realized on Tuesday morning, did I sign up for a role? Well, we have a meeting tonight and we have some people missing on the schedule and it was you. So that's what I want to start with. And then I'm going to move on. Uh, the one thing I love about Queen City is that we have so many characters. When I first came here, I realized that this was my place. You know, they told me go visit this club and that club and another club and see which one you like. And the first thing I came in here, I think the first night I came in here, John was speaking. Um, and I was like, mm, okay. And then I went and looked at the snacks and they were all nut free. So that got me. Uh, they know that already, but this meeting was very awesome to me. Uh, I got so much knowledge, but the one thing I want to start with Junior. Junior, you have this, this thing where you just, I love your spin on life, just on life period. You have this natural ability to take an orange and make it into an apple some kind of way. I, you know, so I got, I got that when you said you think you're going down, but you may just be leveling up. That I'm going to take with me for life. <laughs> that was great. And then, um, so that started me off at a high for the meeting. The meeting was very it was sufficient for my spirit. And then uh, you gave great examples. And then um, Fitz, you were just giving great examples of how to be sufficient, how to keep going, how to keep moving. And that was great for me. And then, uh, you know, one person is not social. And we were talking about that at church last week. Uh, when you're doing outreach, you want to, you want to put a team on which goes back to me saying, sign up, because we're a team. We're not just one person. David cannot do this on his own. You know, no one can do this on it. I mean, he does a great job, but he needs support. Um, and so that was where I was going with that. Um, so I, I, I did something a little different. Um, and I took it from uh, when you were talking about the impromptu speech, John, that you, you, you don't get to prepare. But the good thing you don't have, you're not, you don't have to prepare, but the bad thing is you're not prepared. And it made me think about life is like an impromptu speech. You are born without preparation to live, but the good thing is you get to live anyway. And then you determine your reactions and the stories your life will tell. You can be an example to somebody else to live. You may be teaching someone. Uh, you may need to be social. You need to get out there. You need to get around people. This is all from you guys' speeches. There's nothing out of my head, trust me. Um, leave, you know, leave the past behind. You know, when you leave the past behind, it was the, the first question he asked, how do you begin? How do you begin again? You get to begin again. 
So if, okay, say you failed yesterday, but you woke up today. So God gave you a whole nother chance. I might sound like I'm preaching, but God gives you a whole nother chance to start again. And then your effort is your reward. I think that was Heather's. Your effort is your, no, that was, uh, that was, that was, that was, who was that? That was somebody's. Um, it was, your effort is your reward. Um, oh, it was yours. You was talking about confidence. You had to put effort in to build your confidence. So it was your, I was right. Um, turn on your light. And I'm going to say this. I didn't write this one down, but I need to, I need to say this. You have to trust yourself. Oftentimes we're so afraid of what we can't do because we're worried about the past or what we didn't do that we don't give our chance to do something in the future. So I needed to say that it's not on here, but that just popped in my head because I didn't trust myself. Um, take an opportunity. Sometimes we don't take the opportunities. That's been, I, I, I can't tell you, I was working a job and I got offered like two jobs and I was like, no, because I got this job. And then three months later I got laid off. I mean, you know, and then I'm sitting there like, why didn't I take that job? Well, God said, I, it's like, I don't know if you ever heard, seen the, um, the thing uh, waiting for Godot and they're waiting on the island to get rescued and then I'm waiting for Godot and they keep waiting <laughs> and God keeps sending people, Godot keeps sending people by, they keep sitting there waiting, nobody, so they never get off the island, you know, they become old and they're still on the island and that's what we do in life and then um, take a risk for long-term goals, you can be sufficient, you can trust yourself and God says his grace is sufficient Stop worrying about what was, what you don't have, what will be, and just be today with the best you can. Turn that first page and start at page number one of living your dreams. I'm done. Oh, I'm gonna call the Grand Marion up. It's all right. Sean. Thank you, Toastmaster Andrea. Great speech, everybody. Great use of the word as well. I've, I've heard it many times throughout the day. But Cheryl, I heard you say it once. John Capello, once. CJ, once. Rachel, uh, once. Leon, once. David, once. Andrea, and you as well. Uh, once, multiple times, actually. And if I missed anybody who said the word of the day, I, I apologize. That's what I have recorded along with the us and ums. I naturally don't track us and ums on speeches, their prepared speeches, and for guests as well. For our members, us and ums, Andrea had you at two ums in the beginning and toward the end. John, I had you, I got two us from you. They're slight, very, uh, very slight us. Next, I wanna kind of continue with what Andrea was talking about. Some statements that I heard throughout the evening that resonated with me that I wanted to kind of dis, uh, regurgitated back to you. Heather, you had three statements that were really good. Confidence is a muscle. Confidence is a muscle. I think I've heard that on a podcast or somewhere else. Really like that. When there is a will, there is a way. Choose faith over fear. Junior, you had a statement that said, with love, with care, everything started to come to fruition. John, you, had, you said, think of the stage as a blank canvas and that's how we should think of it as we do table topics you can talk about anything that you want to even if the question itself isn't really the question you want to you can kind of weave it to what you want it to be cj you had said because sometimes you have to take a short-term risk to obtain a long-term goal rachel you had said we did not come to this earth to stay the same we came here to evolve Beyond two statements you had mentioned, you have to sacrifice who you are to become who you want to be. And you also had said the best moment is the present. Andrea, you finished up with a statement and that was just be today, be the best you can. And you had further statements after that. Overall, great meeting everybody. I hope to see you all in person next week. Thank you very much, Andrea, back to you. Awesome, awesome. Let's give him a hand and I'm going to turn it back over our Toastmaster today. Toastmaster Fitzgerald will fit. I'm sorry. Yes. Thank you, Toastmaster Andrea. Before I turn it over to our presiding officer, I just wanted to leave you all with my last new beginnings. Unfortunately, I, earlier this year, I ended a long term relationship. No worries, so it was amicable. And 
I can't lie. It, it's scary when you lose someone that you're super close with, especially when you spend a couple of years with that person. But as I was going through that breakup, I found another relationship with myself. I was able to find new passions. I started taking Latin dance classes, uh, joined Toastmasters, met all these wonderful people. And then lastly, I started taking on new challenges. So this is my first meeting that I've hosted. Uh, when David first reached out, you know, the, the fear kind of went off my brain and I was like, ah, I don't think I'll be able to do that. But eventually cooler heads prevailed and I said yes to the, to the responsibility. And I learned that as you start trying new things, that, that voice in your head that tells you no, it starts to quiet out and that, that confidence muscle starts to build. And when you do do new things, it, it enhances you personally, professionally, as well as socially. So I encourage you all to go out, try new experiences. Don't be afraid to take on a new beginning. And with that being said, I'll turn it over to our presiding officer, Toastmaster Elvis. Thank you so much. Please join me in giving another round of applause to our Toastmaster of the day. Great job. Great, great, great job. Thank you for being vulnerable, sharing your story with us and breaking your challenges, deciding to make the step forward. Thank you for that. Now, I would like to close out the meeting, but before that, I would like to also ask for another round of applause for our two speakers. Heather, Eric, for our evaluator. <laughs> I was an evaluator, but that doesn't count. And to our table topic speakers. Since we don't have a ballot counter, everybody won today. But I have a special award to our icebreaker speaker, Heather. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. I would like now to hear a little bit from our guests. Please give us your final impression about the meeting overall. I would start with the ones that are online first, and then we'll go around over the ones that are in person. So who would like to start? I can start. Uh, so this was my first meeting ever in my life. Uh, I didn't even know the rules of the game. I kind of tried to learn the rules as you guys are going and I understood what, they, what you are doing and why. <laughs> so it was pretty fascinating. I liked it a lot. Uh, very lucky that I was here this evening. Thank you. I will gladly go next. Um, this is CJ again. I would like to say that tonight's meeting is very organized. I appreciate um, just the way things are facilitated. I thank all the speakers for their vulnerability because even in hearing some of the speeches, we are able to share a piece of ourselves. So I enjoyed tonight's meeting. Thank you for having me and thank you for allowing me to participate in the table topic. Thank you. Who would like to go next? Yeah, yeah uh, this meeting was a good one uh, as before. And it was nice also being able to view and uh, tune in from uh, the virtual space. So I definitely enjoy how you guys have the setup with the speaker view and the club view to make things as engaging where I felt basically as if uh, I was there. So I appreciate that. And uh, as again, another wonderful meeting. Thank you. Do we and have any other? Oh. Mm -hmm. Sorry. I'm sorry, go, go ahead. No worries. This was, as I mentioned, my second meeting. And so I kind of knew the lay of the land, but really enjoyed seeing it a second time and just hearing from different speakers and different topics. 
trying to learn uh, all the rules and, and kind of how it all goes together. And I'm looking forward to another meeting, hopefully in person. Thank you. Is that everybody online? I think so. Right. Okay. And now let's go with our guests on site. So I will pass on the mic so the so the ones that are online can hear you. I love this club. I think it's amazing. I love that there are people here that I already know. And I think everybody makes everyone feel welcoming, whether you're online or here in person. So I really enjoyed tonight, especially here. Loved hearing Heather give her first speech. And um, I love the positivity actually. And like everybody that's here really appears to want to be better human beings in general. And I think that um, the people that are in this room have the potential to change the world because everybody seems to be so positive. So I really enjoyed that. Um, I really liked it. Mom, you did a really good job. So yeah. I really enjoyed um, this meeting for it to be my first time. It was very organized. I enjoyed hearing all the speakers and hearing the different speeches. It was very relatable. And I like how this feels like a safe space and that it's a no judgment zone. Um, I definitely see myself coming back or joining. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone, our speakers, our evaluators, our Toastmasters and guests. We will be meeting next week again. Welcome everyone again, and we hope to see you next time. Thank you so much. I have one person here giving an announcement. Oh, okay, please. Is that for everyone? Do you, would you like to? Okay, so uh, unfortunately for those who are online, <laughs> you're not going to be part of the special gifts that Heather, our speaker is bringing to the ones that are on site. Maybe, <laughs> Uh, a, mod a, <laughs> a motivation to come on site next time. So Heather, please, if you would like, uh, he's, uh, I mean, she is going to share uh, books with everyone. And thank you so much for that uh, gesture. And again, uh, welcome everyone to our club. We will be meeting next week. Thank you all for participating. And with that, we will call this meeting adjourned. See you, everyone.